Hi everyone. In this video, I'll be giving a demonstration of multi-level mediation analysis using Levon. We're going to be testing a 111 mediation model. So in my previous video, uh, I demonstrated how to carry out a multi-level path analysis um, where we essentially had a, a mediation model specified at level two. And then we had uh, essentially a path model specified at level one, uh, where we had essentially two exogenous variables and two endogenous variables. Uh, but in this particular video, we're specifying really all of the, the main model at level one. And so we're not gonna be having a prediction model uh, specified at level two. So before we get started, I do want to uh, mention a few things. First off, the data that we're working from uh, is based on that which is provided by uh, these authors um, in, uh, for this study right here, linking colleague support to employees promote a voice, a moderated mediation model. So uh, in this particular article, the authors tested for moderated mediation, uh, but we're only going to be uh, kind of uh, using their data to specify a mediation model only at level one. So we're not actually gonna be following along with the author's demonstration, but I just wanted to show you where um, the data is coming from. And, um, and if you want more variable description, you can obviously go to this site. So I'll include this link underneath the video description. So just uh, briefly too, uh, the data is coming from 162 employees uh, who are embedded or nested within 51 work teams. And here, uh, here is just a visualization of the model that we're gonna be testing. So you'll see at level one, we have uh, psychological safety and team identification, uh, serving as predictors of felt obligation, uh, and felt obligation uh, is serving as a predictor of promotive voice. So in this model, felt obligation is being treated as a mediator of the effects of psychological safety and team identification on promotive voice. And all of the level one variables that you see here are measured at uh, the employee level. Uh, you'll notice that at level two, you see the two ovals that are given, and that's just reflecting uh, the randomly varying intercepts for felt obligation and promote a voice. And then the double-headed arrow is signifying that we have um, a correlation in terms of those randomly varying intercepts for those variables. So when you're running Levon, uh, if, uh, you have to make sure that you have some model specified at level two. So if I specify my model only at level one and I don't specify anything at level two, uh, then the model will not run. So um, this is uh, just uh, kind of a, a possible suggested uh, solution to that problem using um, the endogenous variables or the randomly varying intercepts for the endogenous variables in our model and then allowing them to correlate as you see right here uh, in this diagram. Okay, so here we are in our studio and uh, the first thing we'll do is uh, just go to session, set our working directory, choose our working directory. I, I actually already have it set up under my downloads folder. That's where the data is located. So from there, I'll go in, uh, import data set. We're gonna be uh, importing a CSV file. So we're gonna go to, uh, from text base right here. This is the file PR voice, uh, capital V and then a five. So we'll click on open right here and um, we have this little wizard come up uh, where it says heading, make sure that that is set for yes. And uh, then we'll click on import. And so now the data is imported and we're ready to go. So then the next uh, thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go under the script editor. So we'll click on file, go to new file, click on our script, and we'll begin uh, typing in our information. Um, now, so the, uh, with our importing uh, the data, the data has already has been read in. So this is actually the code for reading the data into an object, which is called PR Voice 5, or PR Voice, capital V, and then a 5. So that's the data frame, or the name of our data frame that we're going to be working with. Just to kind of show you, if I use the uh, str structure function, and then we type in PR Voice, capital V, and then a 5. Uh, we'll highlight this 
and click on run. And so now you can see this is our data frame. So you can see our variables um, are included in this data frame. Um, by the way, if you just wanted the names of the variables, we could just use the names function right here, PR voice V5 and um, highlight that, click on run and you get the, the variable names. So let's go ahead and, uh, and uh, type in our model. So first thing I need to do is go ahead and type library. We're gonna use the library function and call up Levon. So once we've done that, then we are going to specify our model. So I'll go ahead and highlight this, click on run. So now uh, we have Levon activated and it's ready to go. Uh, so then uh, we'll, we're going to first create an object that contains our model specification. So I'm going to call this model 1A, and then I'm going to uh, type in a lesson sign followed by a hyphen. That's just our assignment operator. And then we're going to type um, an, a, um, an, a, a, a quotation mark. So just keep in mind that when you are typing in your model uh, using Levon, uh, that you embed all of the model information between uh, two, your two single quotes, okay? So I've got the first single quote right here. Uh, I'll just kind of go down, put a second one here, make sure it doesn't kind of add another one down there for you. Um, and so everything goes in between. So then I'm gonna type in level colon and then one. Okay, so make sure that when you are um, when you're typing this in, you should not be typing in level one and then a colon, rather level colon and then a one. Then we'll do the same thing for level two, level colon two. Okay, again, we're not going to include the two after, right after level. We're going to type level colon and then a two. So then at level one to specify our model, our outcome variable was um, was PR voice. Okay, so that's promote a voice. So I'm gonna type in PR voice, followed by a tilde, and then we're gonna type in felt obligation, or the word, in the, the name in our data set is this one right here, felt OBL right there. So we'll type that in, felt OBL. So just, just keep in mind that even though I might be referring to the actual name of the variable, uh, you have to include the actual uh, name as it's given in the data frame in the Levon uh, syntax. So at this point, uh, we'll also go down to the next line and we'll type in felt OBL and then uh, tilde and then psi safe or basically psychological safety plus team ID and the I and the D are both in caps. So the variables that we're using are team ID right here and uh, the psi safe variable right here. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go to uh, the level two portion of the model and we're gonna type in PR voice, then two tildes followed by uh, felt OBL. So we're referencing right here, uh, the two endogenous variables that we had at level one. And when we have two tildes, that is specifying a covariance. So at level two, what's gonna happen is, is that uh, the level two versions of these variables capturing the between, uh, between group variation, um, basically what we're, what we're capturing are randomly varying intercepts and then we're allowing those randomly varying intercepts to co-vary. So that's basically all there is to it. Then we need to make sure that we end it with this, um, with this uh, single quote that you see right here. So I'll go ahead and highlight all of this and including that last uh, single quote right there, click on run. And so now we have our model stored in a data object that's called model 1A. Following that, we'll type in, uh, we're gonna create a new object that's going to contain our information for uh, after we fit our model. So I'm gonna call this object fit one for lack of a better naming system here. We'll type in our assignment operator, then use the SEM function. So SEM, the first uh, argument, we're gonna refer to the name of our model, which we have is model 1A right here. Then from there, comma, then data equals to, and then PR voice V5, Okay, that's the name of our data frame. And then we need to specify the clustering variable. So in the data, uh, in the data set, 
the clustering variable is this team code variable right here. So we're going to uh, type in cluster, set that equal to, and then side quotation marks, we refer to team code. Okay. Then once we've fitted our model, we need to inspect our, you know, look at our output. So we'll type in summary. We're going to use the summary function. We'll refer back to this object that we are going to be uh, uh, creating right here, fit one. We'll type a comma. Other things you might ask for, we'll ask for uh, kind of a more extensive menu of uh, fit measures. So we'll type in fit period uh, measures, and we'll set this equal to T or true. Then R square, and we'll set this equal to T or true right there. Um, finally, if you wanted to, um, you know, look at the ICC interclass correlation after we've um, specified this model, you can certainly do that. You can just type in LAV, uh, then capital I and inspect. So this Levon inspect function right there, and we'll type in fit one comma, and inside quotation marks, we'll type in ICC. So we've already saved our model information right here. So now we're just going to run the rest of this by highlighting all of that, and then we'll click on run. And so now we have our model output. So we'll scroll up and you can see that uh, up here, you know, you get the, uh, the uh, chi-square goodness of fit test. There's chi-square value is 0.977 uh, degrees of freedom two, and there's your p-value. So that non-significant um, chi-square test would be an indicator of, of good fit or uh, possible good fit. We also have the CFI and TLI that are given right here. Typically values above 0.95 are considered kind of more superior, I guess you could say, I'll put it in air quotes. Um, and uh, so that's clearly the case, you know, values above 0.90 are still oftentimes regarded as acceptable. Uh, we have the root mean square error of approximation or RMSEA. Uh, this value is zero. Um, it's bounded at the lower, it's at the lower bound, it's zero. And then it goes on uh, to positive infinity. And uh, as you have higher values that deviate from zero, that reflects worse and worse, and worse fit. So values less than 0 0.05 are generally regarded as more kind of optimal fit. Values uh, less than 0 0.08 are regarded typically as acceptable. Values that are greater than 0 0.10 are oftentimes regarded as uh, indicator of poor fit. Uh, then we also have the standardized root mean square residual, and you can see that we have it at both the uh, within covariance matrix and between covariance matrix. Um, and so both of these values are uh, low, close to zero, which are signaling a, a, a good fit right here. Then when we look at the level one equations right here, you can see the regressions. You can see that felt obligation, that's a positive and significant predictor of promotive voice. Then in terms of predicting felt obligation, you can see uh, perceived uh, psychological safety is a positive and and uh, significant predictor. Team identification is also a, a positive and significant predictor of felt obligation as well. So there's your positive regression slope and there's your p-value. Um, so there you go. And then you can see you've got uh, some R-square values that are given for both of those. Um, and then at level two, the only uh, parameters that are estimated uh, you'll see that there's the covariance between the randomly varying intercepts. Uh, you've got the uh, fixed effects for the intercepts that are given right there, right here. And then also the uh, estimated uh, uh, um, variances for the, um, for the intercepts. And then down below, like I said, if you wanted the um, ICCs for uh, your endogenous variables, as you can see right here, there they are provided down below. Now, if you want to test for mediation, we can make some modifications to our model that will allow us to uh, to accomplish this. So I'm actually just going to just go ahead and copy all of this, and I'll paste it in down below, and we'll just make a few modifications. So the first thing that we have to do though is we have to label the paths that are involved. Uh, in the mediation. So the paths that will be used to uh, compute the indirect effects. So as you're looking right here, uh, what I've done is just kind of modified our model just to kind of show you, um, you know, what paths we're using. So you'll see that we've got 
uh, I'm going to assign a label of A1 to this path from psychological safety to felt obligation, A2 from team identification to felt obligation, and then a path B right here. So the first indirect effect is going to be computed as a product of A1 and B. The second one will be computed as a product of A2 and B. So going back then to our uh, model, um, so the path from psychological safety to uh, felt obligation, I'm gonna give, assign it a label of A1. So we type in A1 and then an asterisk right here. Then for the second path, A2, we're gonna type in A2 and then asterisk uh, So uh, for team identification. Then the third is going to be uh, B and we'll uh, type in an asterisk for felt obligation. Uh, pointing to uh, to uh, promote a voice. So now that we've done that, the next thing that we need to do is to uh, specify some estimates uh, to capture the indirect effects. So to do this, I'm, I'm actually just going to add a little comment here. I'm going to call it adding or type in adding estimates to capture indirect effects. So we'll type in IE1. So that's just the name of the estimate that I'm, that I'm providing. So there's nothing special about the name. The main thing is we have to type in a colon and then an equal sign. And so whatever's following that is gonna be the function or, or the expression that's going to generate that estimate. So we're multiplying paths A1 and B. So I'm gonna type in A1 asterisk and then B. Okay, so uh, we can add in a little comment if we want to right here. I'll just add a pound sign right there and we'll, we'll uh, type in, um, we'll type in psi safe right there, um, arrow, and then just kind of going to felt obligation right there, leading to uh, PR voice right there. And then we'll do the same for IE2. So we'll add our uh, colon, then followed by an equal sign, then A2, then asterisk B. And I'll just type this in as well. Go ahead and type in um, team ID led, leading to felt obligation, leading to PR voice. Okay, so that's basically all there was to it in terms of adding or modifying our syntax. So that's so everything else is going to remain the same. So when we fit the model, we're still naming it model 1A. And so we're still using everything that we had used previously um, in terms of generating our fit one object. Uh, so we're using the SEM function as before, using the summary function in order to examine the fit one object. And then we can, you know, if we want to, again, have this uh, information for the ICCs, we would have that. Nothing uh, in, this, in, the, in this output right here is gonna change, except for the fact that when we, now when we generate our output using the summary function, we're gonna be including those indirect effects. So let's go ahead and highlight all of this and we'll click on run. And so now looking at our output, everything else is exactly the same, but now you can see that we have a little section down here that says define parameters, and you can see that we have IE1 and IE2. So here are our estimates for the unstandardized uh, indirect effects, and then you can see that we have our Z values and our P values are given. Uh, so you can see that both of our indirect effects were positive and statistically significant. So that, um, that pretty much is all there is to it in terms of uh, running a 111 uh, mediation model uh, using Levon. So um, I hope you uh, found this useful. Uh, be sure again to check out the links underneath the video description. Um, one in particular will provide a little bit more additional information uh, if you want some more details on uh, interpretation and so forth. So that's gonna wrap it up. You guys have a great day.